Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. This is June 2024 and I have previously done videos about perch building but I'm going to show you in this video four methods of installing perches in whatever type of enclosure you have for your snakes. These four methods will work in PVC, in tubs, in wood, in melamine, and anything that you can stick sticky stuff on or drill holes through. And one of the methods that I'm going to show you, actually two of the methods will also work in glass. So let's take a look at the first method, and that is to drill a hole through two ends of your enclosure so that your entire piece of PVC perch fits through the hole. And then you put your PVC end caps on the outside of the tub and the PVC doesn't come through the hole. So that just takes a hole saw, and I'm gonna show you that in this video. Now let's take a look at these other methods. So this is the first method I showed you. I've drilled holes here that are a little bit wider than three quarter inch. The three quarter inch PVC goes through the holes, and I put three quarter inch end caps on the end, and so this moves a little bit, but it's not coming out. The second method is to use adhesive hooks and stick those where you want them on the sides of the tub. Put PVC end caps on your PVC, drill holes in the end caps and put eye hooks in, and they just hang on the adhesive hooks. I've only had these adhesive hooks fail twice in the, what, six, seven years I've been using these. One just kept coming off and wouldn't stick in one particular spot for some reason. And then one, the hook itself, the metal hook came off. But I've used these in at least 100, 110 enclosures and I've only had two fail. The other method is to drill two small holes, which if it's a tub, you're gonna want air holes in it anyway. And then take your PVC perch and fix it up just the way I showed you for if you're using the adhesive hooks, except that you're gonna run a twisty tie or a zip tie through your eye hook and out these two holes and attach it to the outside. If you think you're gonna want to take this perch on and off frequently, I advise you to use twisty ties. If you think you're not gonna to wanna to take it off, you can use a zip tie. So here's an example of a zip tie. Okay, so you may have just looked at all that and thought to yourself, hey, I can do that. I've seen all I need to see. That's great. If you need specific instructions as to how to do each of these methods, that's what we're gonna do now. Starting with your tub, you need to choose the tub you're gonna use or the PVC enclosure you're gonna use. And then you need to decide which method you're gonna use. And these are some of the things that you might need. PVC end caps, PVC perch holders, zip ties, eye hooks, screws. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those things fit your PVC. So I'm using three quarter inch PVC. I wanna make sure all of my supplies are meant to fit three quarter inch PVC. And the first thing I'm gonna do for method one is hook up my hole saw um, by finding the correct hole saw size, which is gonna be the three quarter inch. I'm gonna attach that to my drill so that I can drill those holes in each end of my tub for my three quarter inch PVC to fit through. So this is what that looks like when it's affixed to your drill and you can buy hole saw sets at Home Depot, at Lowe's, at Home Base, at any hardware store, or you can order them online. So I'm gonna drill the hole through my PVC um, or through my tub, but you can also do this on PVC or wood, obviously. And once I get that hole drilled, then I'm gonna make sure that my PVC fits through there. And I'm gonna just zoom in so you can see what this looks like close up. 
So I've actually got a hole that's just slightly bigger than three quarter inches so that my three quarter inch diameter PVC can fit right through there. And most snakes, unless they're extremely tiny, are not going to be able to fit through that slight space that is left between the outside of the PVC and my hole. But remember, I'm going to cut this down to size and I'm going to put end caps on here. Once the end caps are on here, the end caps are too big to fit through those holes. And that is what holds your PVC securely in place. So now I am going to have to approximate where I need to cut the PVC. So I'm gonna hold my end cap up flush with the tub and I'm just gonna mark where it ends on my PVC. And then you're gonna need something to cut your PVC with. This is the tool I use to cut the PVC, but you could use some type of an electronic um, saw as well. But this handheld tool has always worked really well for me to cut most sizes of PVC. So I'm going to cut my PVC and then I'm going to put my second end cap on. And then I'm just going to make sure that that is not going to slide out and that I indeed made it the correct size. And these end caps just pop on. And so now I've got my three quarter inch PVC through the holes. I've got an end cap on each end and the PVC is now held in place just by the end caps and it's not gonna come out. And most snakes cannot squeeze through that tiny hole. If you are questioning, if you think you have a snake that is so tiny, it can squeeze between that tiny space, which is probably one or two millimeters between the outside of the PVC and the end cap, then you're gonna to wanna to use one of these other methods. The second method that I'm gonna show you involves putting the PVC end caps on your PVC pipe first, and then you're gonna drill holes in each of the end caps and use eye hooks and either zip ties or a string or rope or a twisty tie to attach the PVC perch to the interior of your enclosure. So I've got the end caps on and I'm drilling a hole in each of the end caps. You wanna make sure that that hole is gonna be tight. So you wanna use the correct diameter drill bit that's gonna correspond with the diameter of the eye hook that you're gonna use so that it is nice and snug. You don't want that eye hook to be loose once you have screwed it into your PVC end cap. So now I'm screwing the eye hook into the hole that I just drilled and I want it to be snug. So it may be a little difficult to twist, in which case you can use a screwdriver or a drill bit or something for leverage to help you screw that in. How far do you screw it in? You screw it in as far as you need to, to make the length correct. So if you overestimated how short you needed your PVC, you can leave that eye hook stick out further. I have screwed mine all the way in because I'm gonna put my PVC perch in diagonally. And so it's a lot easier to adjust because it doesn't really matter how long I made it. I can screw it in and make it fit. If you need an exact length and you overestimate the length and leave it too long, then you're gonna to have to cut some off. But if it's too short, you can adjust that by pulling your eye hook out a little bit. So I'm drilling two holes where I want the end of the PVC perch to be. And I'm sticking, in this case, a twisty tie through one hole, through my eye hook, and then out the second hole. And I'm just gonna twist that into place. You can also use a string, a rope, a zip tie, whatever is convenient for you. And you need to consider how permanent you want this to be or not. So obviously a string you can tie and untie, a twisty tie you can untwist, but if you use a zip tie, that's a little bit more permanent. You would have to cut that if you wanna take the perch off quickly. So on this end, I'm showing you um, the use of a zip tie, just as an example. So on the other end, I used a twisty tie. On this end, I used a zip tie, but literally all you're doing is drilling a couple of holes into your PVC or tub, just as if you were gonna drill air holes in and you're just gonna stick your zip tie, your twisty tie, your string, whatever you're using through one hole, through your eye hook, out the other hole, and you're gonna um, secure it. And now I've got my PVC perch in there. It's very secure, 
And now I can move on to showing you method three, which is really similar to this. And it starts out the exact same way. So for method three, you're gonna set up your PVC perch just the same way we did in the previous method. You're gonna put your end caps on, you're gonna drill holes in it, and you're gonna screw eye hooks into your PVC perch. This time, instead of drilling holes in the side of the tub for your zip ties or twisty ties or string, we are just gonna stick adhesive hooks to the interior of the tub or the PVC enclosure. This method can also be used with a glass enclosure. Anything that adhesive will stick to, this method will work on. So we are just cleaning the area where we're gonna stick the adhesive hooks on. You typically wanna make sure that it is clean, free of debris, and then you wanna wipe it with alcohol and let that surface dry. And then you're going to stick your adhesive hooks onto the interior of the enclosure. And then you are just gonna hang your PVC onto the adhesive hooks. So the hook just goes right through the circle portion of your eye hook and your perch is set. And so here is what that looks like. This is really pretty quick and easy. It's probably the fastest method. And I've, I've had really good luck with this method. I've only had the adhesive hooks fail on me twice in all of the years that I've used this in over a hundred enclosures. So, Here's what we have so far. And now the fourth method is going to involve commercially made perch holders. So this is gonna require an exact measurement. So you're gonna have to exactly measure the length of the PVC that you're gonna need. And then you're going to have to take these commercially manufactured perch holders and you're going to have to mark or set or somehow tape them on you're gonna to need to somehow know exactly where they need to be because you have to drill pilot holes into your enclosure and then you're gonna to have to screw the perch holders in. The good thing about the tub is the tub's a little bit flexible and I was able to put my perch holders onto my PVC and then just slide it on there until it sort of held itself in place. And then I was able to go ahead and drill my pilot holes and then remove the PVC and screw the perch holders in. That sounds really simple, but when you're dealing with something like this, it's not as simple to do once you start working on it. So as you'll see here, stuff falls down several times. It's not a big deal. This is a little bit um, more forgiving when you're using something that's pliable like this tub. I don't have to screw these in. Um, exactly exactly in the correct place but if you're using something like wood or pvc that isn't as malleable you're going to want to do exact measurements as to exactly where these perch holders need to be screwed in to the sides keep in mind if you're using these commercial perch holders they are flat on the back and so they have to be adhered to flat or flush with the interior of your enclosure, you're not gonna be able to install these diagonally the way I was able to install the ones that I was using the eye hooks on with the adhesive hooks or with the twisty ties and the zip ties. These commercial perch holders are meant to screw into a flat side of a PVC enclosure or a tub or a wood enclosure and you're not gonna be able to put them diagonal. So I've put the bottom half of the perch holder in, I'm drilling my pilot holes right now, and then after I do that, I'm just gonna take a handheld screwdriver or an electric screwdriver, and I'm gonna screw the perch holders into the side of my enclosure. And I'm gonna put one screw in each perch holder, and that's usually the top screw, and then I'll go ahead and do the pilot holes on um, the bottom of the perch holder and screw in the bottom screw. I've found that's the easiest way for me to do it, but you can figure out your own way, whatever's easiest for you. So that's what I've done here. I've got the top screw in both ends, so I'm able to show you how that perch fits in. So now what I need to do is also screw the bottom of the perch holder in. If I don't put the bottom screw in, 
and there's only one screw in the top, the perch holder is gonna spin around. So if you want this to be solid and not easily moved, you need to make sure that you go ahead and put both screws in. There's one place to put a screw in the top and one place to put a screw in the bottom. And then once that's done, I'm gonna set my PVC into the holders and then I've got to decide if I want to secure that PVC down more permanently or if I want it to easily lift on and off. And so depending on what company you buy the perch holders from, they may or may not come with a top piece. So I can just set the PVC in these perch holders once they're attached. But some snakes will be able to pop those out if you don't cover them with this piece, for example, that came with the black box cages perch holders. So I put my PVC into the bottom half of the perch holder, and then there's a part that goes on top of the PVC to help secure that in a little bit better. And then there's a hole there that I can choose to screw that black piece into my PVC perch. And if I choose to do that, it helps hold that into place. And I can actually then, if I don't want this to pop up at all, once I've adhered the top half of the perch holder to the PVC, I can still lift it off. So that's what you're about to see here. I've, I've got that attached and it is more secure. It snaps into place, but I can still lift it off pretty easily. Your snakes shouldn't be able to, but if you have a really heavy bodied snake that likes to pull on stuff, they may be able to, in which case you can unscrew the top screw that's holding that PVC perch into the side of your enclosure slightly so that if the perch starts to come up, it won't lift out of the perch holder. So these type of perch holders you have to purchase, um, you have to screw in to your PVC or your tub or, or your wood or whatever you're using it on. And that involves drilling, exact measuring, um, and then screwing the perch holders in. And if you wanna use these caps, you have to screw that into your PVC. These came from black box cages, but I know other companies sell them as well. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about a fifth method, which I've used in the past, but I don't use anymore. And that is commercially purchased magnetic perch holders. So this is what they look like. These came from what used to be called specialty enclosure designs, but is now called the reptile perch. And you have to put a round magnet in that piece that's attached to the perch and that goes on the interior of your enclosure. So you have a round commercial magnet there, and then you have a square or a block commercial magnet on the outside piece. So you have a piece and a magnet on the outside of the enclosure and a piece and a magnet on the inside of the enclosure. And when they come together, they snap that perch holder onto the enclosure wall. And this works on glass, this works on PVC, on wood, on the tub. These are commercial magnets. They're very strong. They work really well. These perch holders work really well. However, the magnets are really strong. And these two, for example, this is an example of the block magnet that goes on that exterior piece, the piece that would go on the outside of your enclosure. These two came together and now I can't get them apart. So this is an example of how that magnet fits into the exterior piece. The piece I'm holding in my hand would be on the inside of the enclosure and it would magnetize to this exterior magnet with the wall in between. And so why don't I use these anymore? Because I've just found them to be dangerous. I have had my pocket knife fly out of my pocket and adhere to these magnets when I've walked by enclosures. I've had my feeding tongs fly out of my hand and attach to these magnets when I'm trying to feed snakes in these enclosures. And the magnets, quite frankly, are just too powerful if you're using metal tools and equipment nearby. If you're trying to handle these magnets, it's easy to get your fingers pinched, body parts pinched. They're just that strong, so I don't use them anymore. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out at behavioreducation.org. If you want group classes, private coaching, just additional education, you can find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash behavioreducation. And you can always email me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. And until next time, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. Thank you.